Okay, today we're going to be talking about chapter 4.3, which is patterns in nonlinear functions. Uh, we're going to identify and represent patterns that describe nonlinear functions. Today's standard is A1.5.5, which we've had before, which is sketching and interpreting uh, linear nonlinear graphs, uh, which we're going to be doing the nonlinear. Okay, the nonlinear function is basically in its name, again, linear meant line. Okay, it makes a graph that makes a line. Well, nonlinear would be one that does not make a line. So a function whose graph is not part of a line. Okay, so problem number one, classifying functions as linear or nonlinear. Okay, the area A in square inches of a pizza is a function of its radius R in inches. The cost C in dollars of a sauce for a pizza is a function of weight in ounces of a sauce used. Graph these functions shown by the tables below, and then is each one linear or nonlinear? So we just want to represent which one's which. Okay, so they gave us the table here. Uh, two inches has an area of 12.57. 4 inches, 50.27, okay, and so forth and so on. You have that data in your notes. Uh, the sauce is 2 in, two ounces is 80 cents. 4 ounces is going to have to cost $1.60 and so forth and so on on that one. So how do we know if these are linear or nonlinear? Well, one, if you know enough about numbers and functions, you can see it in their, uh, in their numbers. Um, if you don't, then we want to go to a, a graph. So we set up our graph, which I've provided the axis there for you. You just have to fill in the stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do is we went ahead and we have our radius in inches down here. And make sure you label, okay, because if the reader comes along, they need to know what in the world you're talking about. I got kind of a tight squeeze over here, but I have area in inches squared there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the data. Now, the first one said we were 2 and 12.57. So it's kind of small, you know, I counted by hundreds because we're going to need it. Um, so that's really small, close to axis. Four was 50, so that's halfway here. Uh, six was 113 and 10. Okay, so we're 113 and 10, so we're just right in there somewhere. Eight was 201, okay, and 0 .06, so that's right in there. And then 10 was 314, so we're up here. Now it's real clear now to see this, that if we were to connect these dots, let me do this in a different color, there we go. Um, if we were to connect these dots, if I can connect them, mm. okay, what we get is, wow, it was way off. Um, you connect dots, it's hard to do it on this tablet. Uh, but there's the, there's what the graph kind of simulates. Now clearly that does not make a line so we can go ahead and say this one is non-linear. So we can see that a line would be straight. Okay, lines are straight. This is not straight. It has a curve to it. So therefore, it's non-linear. Okay, well, let's look at the sauce. We have our weight in ounces over here. And then we have our cost in dollars over here. Okay, so as we go through, we have uh, two two ounces was 80 cents so right in there four ounces was a dollar sixty uh, six ounces was two forty eight ounces was three twenty and ten ounces was four dollars even now when we look at this one we have again kind of struggling with making lines here uh, we have a line that cuts through those. Now again, in graph paper, when you kind of set this up, hopefully your, yours are nice and neat. Okay, mine's all kind of hand drawn here, so you can see the uh, downgrade to that. But this makes a line, it does. If you look in your book, that does show that it is a line. Okay, so this one therefore is linear. Okay, it makes that line. Okay, so that's the difference. So now we see them compared side by side. Curves are nonlinear, linear are the lines. Okay, well, let's look at problem number two. And in, in your book on page 248, page 248, you'll see this data. 
Okay, so I'll write that page there, 248. What we're going to do is we're going to look at this uh, boxes that they gave us. Now, they said we had a cube. Now, the first one they gave us was, you know, just a simple cube. And we said, well, what's the cube if the edge is a length of x, which is one, one block? Okay, so there's one block in the first cube. Well, how many total blocks do we have? Well, we only have one. So they say, well, what happens if we make this, uh, the edge is two blocks. So one, two, and we have the cube this way. Now, my very poor at drawing, got a C in art. Um, as we go through, we can count these up, but we you know one, two, three, four, and then we have five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there's eight blocks. Okay, two, there's four along the top, four along the second layer of the bottom. Okay, and then if we go to the next one, and that would be three blocks. Okay, we start to get the point here. Now they want they want us to look at this and say, well, how many? So there's one, two, three on the edge. So if you think about it, three this way. And since it's a cube, we got to have three this way as we go down. Okay, so as we look at this, it would be nine on top, nine in the middle, nine on the bottom. So if you kind of go through the respect of stacking blocks on top of each other. So that means we had 27. Now, what they would want you to do is we want to draw that next one, okay, which means that we're going to draw a cube, the best of our ability, to where we have one two, three, four in that direction, which means that if you take the respect of what we have, we have four on top, it would be four deep, which means that there's four, 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 okay, so, you know, all the way down the line here, that means we would have 16 on the first layer, 16 in the second layer, 16 on that third, and 16 on that bottom. If we were to count those all up, what we should get for four layers is we're going to get 64 blocks, which means that we have four 64. Okay. Now we can do this one more time and draw five blocks. And then we could think about that as again, 25, 25, 25. That would make 125 for all those. Okay. And I'll spare you my very poor drawing here, but that's what you would get. So one representation is to use pictures and show that as we go through. Now, the other thing they want us to do is they want us to investigate, well, how do we find that rest of that information? Well, we want to do that by words. Well, it looks like if you take this and you cube that, if I take one cube, I get one. If I take two, and since it's in a cube, I cube it. So I take one cube, I get one. If I take two cubed, I get eight. Well, that matches up here. What is if I take three cubed? Well, three times three is nine, times three is 27. So that gets us that one. And then four cubed, well, that gets us 64. Five cubed, well, that gets us 125. So what happens if I were to say, well, what happens if I have X? So if I were to keep making this bigger and bigger and bigger, well, I would take x cubed, and I would get my y, which means my word of pair would be x, y. So there's my expression, my equation. Now, if we want to write that kind of properly, then I might write it as y equals x cubed. So there would be my equation. But we just did that by identifying the pattern. Since we were talking about a cube, we know that one cube, one uh, one block cube is a one by one by one. A two would be two by two by two, three by three by three, four by four by four, just kind of how we drew it. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and stop right there, take a little break, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about how to represent uh, problem two as, as a, a graph.